Well, hello there, and a very, very warm welcome to our webinar today. My name is Sharon Mark Teggart, and along with Dr. Sally Catcart, uh, we are both the co founders and directors of the Curious Piano Teachers. And uh, we are delighted to see people are hopping on, the numbers are increasing every second. So I just want to say, a very, very, very warm welcome to Pam Wedgwood. Pam, hello, welcome, and how are you today? Hi. <laughs> hello, everybody. Really nice to be here. Um, it, it's really a joy to, to come and do something like this with other people, you know, even if they're not in the room. It's, um, it's going to be fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and we were just saying before we came on the call, when was it last that we did this? Because Sally and I absolutely, we have always, always loved doing things um, with Pam. Pam has been very much on board the Curious Piano Teachers since we started, and that's going to be nearly six years ago this May. Um, so it's always so wonderful, Pam, to have your support. And thank you so much for being on this call today. And I just want to say hello uh, and welcome to Rachel from Favour as well. Rachel, I know that you do all this wonderful stuff behind the scenes in getting this set up. So thank you so much. Thanks so much for having us. It's really great to be here. Great. So, um, if you are just okay. joining us, oh, sorry, go ahead, Sally. No, I was just going to butt in there and say hello to everybody as well. And it's great to have so many of you already coming. So uh, do say hello, pop in the chat, please. And make sure it goes yeah. to panelists and attendees, panelists and attendees. Otherwise, just us lucky panelists here will we'll end up seeing all the hellos from you. So a big welcome to everybody, especially if this is your very first webinar with the Curious Piano Teachers. If it is, then do let us know. Hey, this is my first webinar. Um, we love giving these, these webinars for very everybody. Too. And we love having people like Pam to come and give them to us because, and I'm really excited about this because uh, Sharon's organized it all and I'm thinking oh yeah I'm going to really look forward <laughs> to these hearing about these pieces so we've got lots of people here haven't we Sharon not everybody has gone yeah, shopping well. or having their hair done as I thought it might be the case <laughs> so who have we got Sharon okay let's just call out a few names um <clears throat> I'm going to say hello first of all to Julianne who is in Australia uh Julianne let us know what time is it in Australia um, it's obviously not the same time as it is in, uh, in East Sussex, where we have um, Candida. Hello there and welcome. We have uh, Wendy, we have Pamela uh, from Winchester, we have Lynn uh, from Wales, also Anita in North Wales. Um, don't know if you guys know each other. Uh, we have uh, Louise from Essex. We have Gillian Lots of people. Say hello yeah, from yeah. Scotland. And let's see, one more mention. Got we have Grace in Brunei. I'm going to come in with Grace in Brunei. So oh, wow. we've got Australia, Brunei. Great stuff. Great stuff. And Julianne says it's 10:30 in the evening in Australia. Good on you. Good yeah. on you, uh, <laughs> yeah. Julianne. Fantastic. So I think before we hand over to, to Pam, um, we're just going to be share, Sharon's going to share with you a few things about Curious Piano Teachers. If some of you haven't been on one of our webinars before or heard about us, um, Sharon and I love the Curious Piano Teachers. And as Sharon just said, I think we, we started it. We're nearly coming up to our sixth birthday next month. And um, Sharon, over to you to tell us a bit more. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not going to take up too much time at all because uh, we really do want to get on to onto Pam. But if you have um, not heard of the Curious Piano Teachers before, or maybe you've heard of us, but you don't really, you couldn't put into two sentences what it is we do. Um, we run uh, an online membership site. Um, we are, of course, all about helping piano teachers learn as much as they teach. Um, something that as a teacher, um, I and Sally as well, we, we both discovered quite early on in our careers that it is so important that we continue to learn. Um, we have, I don't know, I, I mean about you, but certainly the more um, I discover, the more I'm curious about, the more I realize, oh my goodness, I'm really just there. <laughs> it feels like I'm just starting. So um, 
We have an online membership site. I'm just going through the brochure, which I will put the link in the chat in just a little bit. So feel free to grab that because you can see that um, in addition to telling you a little bit more about the sort of things that we get up to. So we do have um, community chats. It's a place where you get to meet other piano teachers from around the world. Um, obviously today, if you were listening and you are a member, do feel free to hop in the comments and just tell people uh, who are not yet members a little bit about what your experience has been. But it's like, as I think Sally has once described as it, this massive big staff room where we all come and we share ideas. We have monthly curiosity boxes and we were just talking to Pam there. Pam has this gorgeous dog called Charlie and she did a composition curiosity box for us probably going back I'm guessing probably nearly four years ago now mm -hmm. and um, so all of the resources for that are still there so curiosity boxes uh, we take a different theme in piano teaching every single month um, we have how-to videos with workbooks with webinars and for those of you who are members you'll know that it's not just Sally and I we have people like Pam we have leading experts in the field of piano pedagogy from around the world um, contributing to those resources as well lots of resources for you as a teacher and also um, for you uh, and your students so you can be listening to a video uh, about something and then you can go and you can apply those ideas in your teaching literally within the next within the next 30 minutes. So it's very, very practical. Um, and we do have a free month. So if you are interested, um, you can simply click on the brochure, which I'll add in the link, and then you can just click here. And that will take you directly to the link and you can explore all of these curiosity boxes. So you get access to absolutely everything we have created within the past mm. nearly six mm. years. Um, so here you can just see the rundown of the topics, but within this, you have multiple videos, you have multiple um, PDF resources, flashcards, workbooks for you, for your students, um, webinar replays. Uh, discounts uh, as well. Uh, our members get uh, various discounts of um, different products as well. And as I say, just that melting pot for, for meeting like minded uh, piano teachers. So and I'm, I'm loving, I'm loving the comments that are coming in from people who are members. So Jack is saying that uh, Curious Piano Teachers is the best CPD she's found. Fantastic. Thank you for that. And made lots of new friends because it is this virtual staff group. You know, as somebody who's worked in a school, I used to love going into the music music department staff room and all your friends would be there and you'd grab a coffee. We like coffee and you'd grab a cake. We like cake as well here. And um, you'd have a chat to people about problems you just had in your teaching and just sitting and having a chat over a coffee actually helps to solve the problem. Or you might need some resources. And of course, all the resources in the staff room are on the shelf. Well, we have 60 odd box files full of resources that we call curiosity box. So it is just like going into that virtual staff room where you make the very best of friends and really develop yourself. So thank you to all of you who, who are here and who are part of the Curious already. And if you feel like it, you know, just give us a go because it is just one free, it is a, a whole free month. Anyhow, enough of that. Shall we hand over I, back to you, Sharon, and you're going to introduce uh, Pam officially, aren't you? I am indeed. So again, Pam, massive, massive thank you for um, your contribution, not just on this webinar, but throughout our years. Um, we always, always love working with you. So for those of you who uh, maybe don't know Pam, Pam is a very, very well known, um, a very, very well loved uh, composer here in the UK. Um, you might, for example, be familiar uh, with Pam's Jazz and the Bite, um, her Upgrade series, um, and also It's Never Too Late to Learn the Piano, just to mention a couple of, of those really pop popular titles. Um, and I know I, I always love um, teaching Pam stuff, so it's really exciting that Pam is on this call today to talk to us about the Rusty Pianist, which is a brand new book. It's not even yet been published, okay? It's it's coming out next, um, I think Rachel was saying next Wednesday. Um, so that's the 21st of April. 
and we are going to have um, uh, a discount code that we're going to be giving away towards the end of the webinar that you can get 20% off your, um, your coffee. So Pam is going to be talking to us today about this um, very exciting new publication, The Rusty Pianist. And um, we know certainly that a lot of people have gone back to taking up a musical instrument. Uh, we were talking, Sally, to someone else, um, I think from America, and they were saying that the, the sale of pianos in America has gone up something like 60% um, in, within the past year, which is really, really interesting because I think it does very much signal that people have been coming back. So I think it's very, very timely, Pam, that you have written this new book. And we are really excited to, um, to find out lots more about it. So um, I'm just gonna start you off with a question. What inspired The Rusty Pianist? Tell us a little bit. Oh, well, <laughs> well, it's a bit of a, a nice story, really, because um, I don't know whether you're familiar with my piano gallery series where the, I base all the, the, the tunes on, on, on works of art. Mm -hmm. And I just got to the end of uh, piano meditations, which I so enjoyed doing. In fact, I enjoyed all of that series so much writing it. And I got to the end of it and I, 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 I sort of thought, well, maybe this is where I hang up my writing pen. And don't do anything else. Maybe this is it. Maybe I've come to the end of the, the lollipop. Anyway, <clears throat> I convinced myself that I was going to retire and not do any more writing. But do you know what? I couldn't. <laughs> I, kept, I, I couldn't do it. So I, I, I kept searching for a, another something else to do, you know, because Every day of my life, I nearly write something. It just happens. And if I don't do it, I don't feel right. It's really weird. Um, so I thought, well, it's not going to stop because I might, and I might as well carry on. If, I've got, if it's coming out naturally, I might as well put it to good use, you know? Mm. So I was chatting to uh, one of my editors, Leslie, who you probably know, and um, we were trying to, to find a, a, a unique selling point for some other thing we could invent together and Rust, um, Rusty, the title Rusty Pianist came up when when Leslie was um, going on that everybody's a bit rusty at the moment everybody's you know and then the Rusty Pianist sort of hit the spot and I thought that's it <laughs> it's all the people who used to play mm -hmm. and now don't because of whatever reason or another this is the reason to write a really friendly informative book that they can understand and start again and not feel threatened so that's 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 why that happened and the other thing is i can't tell you how many times i've heard this phrase oh i do wish i'd carried on learning the piano i i bet you've heard that loads of times from various Lots. friends and people who listen to something and they say oh i wish i i just wish i'd carried on you know and that was the other reason because you can, unfortunately, lots of this um, life gets in the way, doesn't it? Mm. At certain parts of your time in your life where you can't always do what you want to do because of family, work. That's right. You know, it, it, you just stop and you don't really want to stop, but then you don't have any choice. Mm. But um, in this pandemic season, it seems to me like suddenly we've all experienced lots more leisure hours than usual and people have really started to sort of think in a different way um life's taken on a new meaning hasn't it mm. in a way and um you know, people are saying to themselves maybe i can start something different i mean i started painting and art and i've never done that before and i've so enjoyed learning another thing i bet you've all learned something else during this period um, yes, I mean, I, th I think one of certainly piano teachers have been learning the art of Zoom and how to give online lessons. I mean, <laughs> even, if it's, even if it's as basic as that. But yes, it's been an incredible year for learning and for doing something that yeah, yeah. we haven't done before. I mean, I, you, you know, you say to people, maybe you've, have you got an, old, an instrument you can get out the attic and start again? You know, maybe I can get the violin out of the case again. Um, Maybe I can rekindle my love of the piano and open the lid and start, you know, which is brilliant. And so people have, and piano playing has become 
really, really popular mm. over the last couple of years. And a friend of mine who's a piano dealer has never sold so many pianos in his entire life. So for all of us piano teachers all over the world, it's actually a really good position to be in because we're going to get more and more and more pupils who are going to come banging on the door, whether you want it or not, that want your attention. So go for it. Yeah, you know. ab ab absolutely, Pam. So tell us a bit more about the book and, and what the sort of pieces are that are that are in there and, and how you've structured it. Because... Well, before I do that, I'm just going to give you an example of one student that I have. Um, when I moved to the Isle of Wight um, three and a half years ago, I decided I wasn't going to teach any more children. You know, you get I've got mm -hmm. I've got to the age of 74 now and I'm thinking, Actually, I've taught so many children over the last 40 years. Do I need to do this again? <laughs> so the answer was no, I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to concentrate on adult uh, tuition, which I love doing. And so I've got a lovely bunch of adults who come and see me here. Uh, they don't come every week. They come when they want to come, when they've got something they want to play. They've learned it really, really well. And I want to tell you about one of my pupils, just as an example of what can happen in, in this situation. I'm not going to tell, tell you her name because she'd probably go onto this video and, and, and say, oh, yeah, she's talking about me. <laughs> anyway, she came along. She first of all picked up the phone and had the, enough courage to ask me whether it was going to be OK to start again. Uh, she hadn't played for 25 years, which is quite a long period but her son had persuaded her that they still had a piano and she should get on with it again. So I asked her around and I said, look, the best thing to do is come, come over and we'll have a chat about this. And um, she came over because I like to, when I take on pupils, I like to see them in person before we come to an arrangement of anything. So you can, you can suss out what the problems are in a very short amount of time. I think um, with experience, you can do that. Anyway, um, she hadn't played for 25 years. So I said to her, well, what, why did you give up? She said, well, my father, my father had never encouraged me to play. And when I did play, he said, oh, that's, that's, it's rubbish. You know, now that is an awful thing to say to anybody, but obviously this has lived with her for 25 years. So she gave up in the end and um, her confidence is, was zero. But anyway, she came along and I said, look, we can start again. What would you like to play? What sort of music? She said, well, I want to play jazz and blues. So I said, well, hang on a minute. <laughs> you can't just crack into jazz and blues straight away when you, you know, without knowing a little bit about background chords, keys, the rest of it, because there were a lot of things missing in her repertoire that she couldn't remember, you know, simple things. Um, so that's the other thing why this book has transpired, because as the book goes along, you've got helpful tips about what things mean. Like all the Italian terms and, you know, about pedalling and how to phrase things and all those things that you don't get, you don't remember in the beginning, you know, often. Anyway, she kept going and um, after about five or six lessons, she really started to enjoy herself. Like you could see visibly she was into it she said oh I'm so glad that I've started again and to this day she's she's playing amazingly well you know just because she rescued herself you know and into into this 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 position so that is a success story I think that I'm sure many of your listeners here have had the same thing happen with some of their pupils so this book is for them for all those people out there who started and have given up and want to start again. So The Rusty Pianist is a quite a good title, I think. I mean, it's one that you don't forget, isn't it? It's it's very intriguing as well, very curious, mm -hmm. I think, yes, Pam. It, it's, it's a good title, it's yeah. Your, your thing quite well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we just say before we go any further, if anybody's got any questions for Pam, then do pop them in the chat and we'll feed them through to, to Pam when when there is the right moment okay so any questions at all along the way or i think we'd love to hear about um any any students that you've had in the past or have currently got who who have 
been in the same situation who you think might actually really enjoy Pam's book? Sorry, Pam, back over to you. Well, it, yeah, it's a bit like when people say, oh, I can't sing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, the reason they can't think they can't sing is because somebody in the past has told them they can't told sing. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that happens so often. That does infuriate me, that does. Because, you know, you say, oh, come, come to choir mm -hmm. and, you know, join in the singing. Oh, well, I can't sing. You can sing if you've taught the right way and you, you, you know, you've given your confidence to do it. So that is a part of everything. Um, right, well, the book, um, I'll just vaguely go over, well, not vaguely, but I'll go over mainly the points in the book. It's tips for starting pianists. Pianists who starting again want to make progress very quickly. They're not very patient about about learning. So you've got to try and get them to learn in a much more, um, what, what's the word, staggered uh, facility. So they don't overdo it. Never give them something too difficult to play. And then, then once they've told you what, what style they want to do, concentrate on giving them pieces that are quite easy, but in that style, something they can, can really achieve ever so quickly. Um, that, that way you can guarantee that they want to go on and do more and more and more. Um, start by introducing some warm ups, and in the book, at certain points in the Rusty Piano book, you'll find little warm up suggestions. Obviously, you can't do a lot in the, there's a little pull out that goes with the book, and in that, it's called Rusty Reminders. So it's going through all the points of each, like in one piece. Like in this one here, which is called Dreaming, the, re rust, the rusty reminder is about, I call it foot control. Rusty reminders are all the things that you need to recap on that you've probably forgotten about, you know, in the past. So we've got foot control, finger control, and then a couple of Italian terms, merendo and una corda. Because you'd be surprised how many people don't realise about the pedals and how how to work them and how to, be, how to make them effective. It's quite, I think it's a quite a fascinating subject. They have, people have different attitudes to the pedal, don't they? Let's stick the pedal down and not, not worry about it, you know, but you've got to really sort of tell them what to do there. So in this little piece called Dreaming, these are what I've suggested. And, and also at the end, the beginning of each piece um, in the repertoire section, I've always put a little quote I love little quotes to start off, like in this one, it says, you're never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream. <laughs> That's a C.S. Lewis quote. Mm. And that is so true. You can start anything at any point in your life and get a huge amount of pleasure from it. So would you like me to just play you a little bit of this tune, mm, which is called Dreaming? Lovely. Um, the book ranges from about grade probably about grade two and a half, three, to about grade five, by the time you've got to the end of it. So the, the pieces are staggered. And there are pieces from uh, the, the classical repertoire. There are pieces that I've written, and they're about equal amounts of each. So they're about, I don't know how many pieces. Rachel, how many pieces have I written in this? Can I can remember? I can't remember. <laughs> There's probably about nine or 10, I think. And um, I think in the repertoire... I'll for you, Pam. I can't, I don't know off the top of my head. Give me a, a second, I'll let you know. <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter, but, you know, and, and then the classical uh, arrangements are all my own arrangements of cl well-known classical tunes, which I think I did a bit of researching and I, I asked my pupils if they were going to play a classical tune, which ones would they like to do? Because that's the best way of finding out what people really hook on to. So we did that. Um, so look, I'll just give you a little tiny bit of this one, which is called Dreaming. It's in a nice minor key and it, you can play it as slowly as you want. You can dream your way through it if you want. Okay, so let's have a go at this. Thank you. 
So a little piece that you might like to get into, and it's not very difficult. Um, it's lovely though, Pam. I mean, it sounds it sounds harder than it than it looks really, and I love the cantabile, you know, that that lovely opening swooping octave, uh, and I can imagine adults really really enjoying being able to play that. And I love the little links that you've made as well to another piece that you've written. Sorry, do go on. No, I, uh, I, I think um, what I try to do with my writing is to focus on, on the melody. The melody is, is obviously the most important part of a tune. If you write a good melody, you can almost guarantee, however difficult the piece is, that somebody will play, want to play it because they like the tune. Yeah. I work on that basis. Um, just to say as well, there are um, 12 original pieces by Pam, and then there are um, five classical pieces and four folk pieces that are arrangements. Yeah, they're all in a, a, a range of styles. I mean, I have um, written some in the blues and jazzy style, some in, oh, I'm sort of in my, my romantic period at the moment, so I keep writing <laughs> romantic pieces. I'm not in love or anything, it's just, <laughs> it's just how it is at the moment. Um, so I, I find myself writing very soulful things. Um, mm. I think it's probably a state of the times that we're in at the moment, but um, yeah. things yeah. that happen in life, you know, like my sister died over Christmas and, you know, that was a really poignant mm. thing that happened. And it's happened to so many people, mm. um, so many people. And you want to do something meaningful yes. to yes to make it better you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Ab absolutely pam and I, and i think a lot of us are, are, are going to the piano as a place to reflect and to be still yeah. and to be calm yeah. you know so uh, yeah. very beautiful well i wrote my sister a piece as soon as she she wasn't with us anymore and, and that's really helped me because i play that nearly every day and that that that's okay then because I'm there with her, you know what I mean? Yes. So that's nice. Yes. Yes. The other bit of the, um, let me just pick this up. Because the book's not out yet, I've only got like paper bits. <laughs> <laughs> Would you put the, the rusty, um, the title, Rachel, up? Have you got that? Absolutely. The rusty page? Yeah, two seconds. Yeah, okay. Just get some okay. I'll just read, I'll read out some of the titles here so you can get a flavour mm. of what's in it. So we've got, um, hang on, we've got opening night, which is um, like when you go to the theatre and it's a rip roaring sort of start to the book, but it's actually quite easy. We've got the raindrop prelude, which is, as you all know, that one, that's an easy, very, very easy arrangement. Mm. I think it works And I, well. I want to say, Pam, I think you've done a, a beautiful, really beautiful job of that, because of course, it's in a much more, it's in a much harder key and you have it here. Um, I'm just having, having a look. Yeah, you have it in C. I mean, it's, it, it sounds really lovely. And I can, I can imagine lots of people wanting to play this because you have it. Yeah, I think that's, that's gonna be, that's gonna be one of my favorites. I've got um, a piece called Bossa Nova Baby. So we do lots of Latin, some explanations of syncopation, Latin, things like that. Mm. Um, Ava Maria has always been a favourite of mine, again, because the tune is so wonderful and the Gounod arrangement of that. So I've arranged that, how I think people will be able to play it. Um, there's another tune here called Blues for Mabel. This was based on a, a rusty old car that I used to have a long time ago. <laughs> and I called it Mabel. So I thought, well, I'll call it Blues for Mabel because, you know, she was a nice old car, really, but very rusty. <laughs> And then Memory Lane, um, which is another romantic sort of piece. And then I come to some, I wanted to do some arrangements of folk songs because I love folk songs. And um, Down by the Sally Gardens, I've done that one. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't got time to play all of these two because we'll be here for the next till five o'clock. <laughs> but um, they're all on an MP3, which comes with the book. So you've got a ready-made performance, which I've recorded myself, of the pieces that you are studying. So that gives you a really good insight at the beginning of each piece. Um, another tune called The Old Mill, 
they're all in different keys um, and different time structures. So you've got you've got plenty of uh, talking about going from one to the other. Storm in a teacup, which is a cha cha cha, um, and Scarborough Fair. I love doing that one. Scarborough Fair is one of my favourite tunes ever. Um, yes, I I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And do, do we tune... have Do we have a score for any of those at all? I'm just wondering. Or have you got Have you got Scarborough Fair? And I can play that one too, as we've just talked. Oh, about. And that would be that. lovely. Mm. Yeah. This is really weird playing to people because I haven't played to anybody for a long, long time. <laughs> and it, it, you get out of the habit, don't you, of, of actually performing stuff mm. like that. Anyway, I'll do my best. If I make a mistake, I do. Right. So this is the Scarborough Fair. And the, the little quote I put at the top of this one is, to play a wrong note is insignificant. To play without passion is inexcusable. <laughs> And that's by Beethoven. So I think he's pretty right on that. He's hit the nail on the head. So if you play lots of wrong notes, but play them with a lot of passion, then you've cracked it. Yeah? Doesn't matter about the wrong notes. Right, off we go. <laughs> Super, super. Beautiful. Sorry, I yeah, think you had the first page there, but it leaves that's... something to the imagination. Yeah, no, that's great. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah. Yeah, Lynn's um, just I'm hopping liking. in. In fact, a couple of people, such a gorgeous, yeah. lovely arrangement. Yeah. And, people... and it's actually quite accessible because the key that I've, I've yeah. got it in, it, it lies on mm. the fingers pretty yeah. well. So, yes. And also, I've been dealing with the, the rust reminders in this piece are, are the rolled chords. You know, you've got, you know, people sometimes don't know how to, to handle them. You need to, to just be told how, how, how they work. Mm. So it's little things like that. Um, anyway, that, that's that one. I love doing little spins yeah. on the tube, you know, making Yes, make it yes. Easy. And some lush, lush um, harmonies. As I well. know, and I know. It's what I love just... about your writing, Pam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As does everybody else, there's, there's lots and lots of positive comments yes. coming through and people are loving the quotes, the quotes at the yes. beginning, you know, which I think mm. is fantastic. Um, and people excited to try it with their, yeah. with their pupils and somebody who's saying, Sue says it sounds very inspiring to her as a rusty returning pianist. So thank you. Oh, that's useful. Yeah, it's nice to know we've got some people in the room 
who, who are in that category. So that's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm just going to um, throw out a question from Joanna here, who is who has said, uh, I use lots of your work in my teaching. You never fail to interest. I'm curious about how you compose. Do you compose sitting at the piano? Wow. So just a little <laughs> snippet. I know this is probably a webinar in itself, but just a little insight for Joanna on your process. Um, the answer to that question is I have not got a clue how I write things. Um, I, I do write at the piano, but I also write in my head when I'm taking the dog along the beach. Mm. I've always got my phone at hand because then I, mm. I think of a, a nice melody. In fact, this tune, the, the, uh, the one I've just played you, I was thinking of all the variations on that while I was actually on the beach. So I sang them into the dictaphone. And then when I got home, I thought, I'll, I'll just have a quick look, see if that was rubbish or not. And then that it was okay. And I thought I can work that into the tune. Mm. So I, it's a number of ways, really. Um, the melody usually comes just by fiddling about on the piano okay. and going through chord structures and just trying to get just little riffs. If you start off with a riff, you know, a bass riff, and then you can fit something to it. You think, oh, that sounds a bit groovy. Oh, I might just carry on with that one. Um, but it's, it, it's, it's a difficult question because I've been asked that, that question so many times all over the world when I've been on workshops um, mm. and for the lady in Australia, nice to know you're from Australia. My, I was in Australia a few years ago and um, did a series of workshops over there. And um, yeah, it's, it, it's I, they asked me the same question everywhere I went. How do you write, how do you write your music? Well, that's it, I just don't know how it comes. And you know, when I was going to give up last year, um, I'm not right anymore. It's an impossibility because I keep coming up with things. <laughs> you just have to get I it love, all out, I, I, which is yeah, great for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love the fact that you can't stop. You know, it's it's so innate in you that yeah. outpouring of of creativity and musicality. You know, it's creating, it's creating something, mm. and if I don't create something, I don't feel right. You know, no. as I said at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I'm afraid it's going to carry on for a little bit longer yet. Yay! <laughs> Big cheer from us. <laughs> Big cheer from us, absolutely. Anyway, I'll just go through the other cycles and I've written another one called Past Times. Now, past, I've, I've, I've tried to make it sound a bit Mozartian. Shall I just play a little bit of this one? Mm, yes, I won't play all yes. this. Um, you know, playing in the style of Mozart, I learned a lot of Mozart during this break, this um, locking up section we've had. Um, I started to really go into the sonatas and learn them properly. Because when you're teaching and doing and writing, you don't always have time to sort of sit and practice properly. But I suddenly thought, do you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna start playing the piano properly again. And I got Chopin out and I got Mozart out and I got Beethoven out and I, <laughs> <laughs> I quickly realised that it wasn't going to be that an easy task, really. But I, I really enjoyed doing the, the Mozart. And I, I, then I wrote a little piece, which I've called Past Times. And the quote on the top of that says, the music is not in the notes, but in the silences between. Mm -hmm. And that was a, a, a Mozart quote. Mm -hmm. But I think that is so true. So true. The silences yeah. are as interesting as the notes. So. Mm -hmm. You can incorporate that in one of one or two of your pieces that's really good now this one ne doesn't necessarily maybe you play the first bit okay so this is called past times <laughs> sort of style mm. and I think if you were who'd written that you might think oh that sounds a bit like Mozart I think absolutely I, th I think it's very like Mozart and I think I'm it very would make great <laughs> yeah and it make a really good link to what is classical style what is yes. Mozart you know for teachers wouldn't it try and introduce a uh, classical style but in a, a much easier way so you can actually get around it mm. so in the rust reminders on this then you would have little excerpts of 
of work, little workouts to practice with all the finger work because it's not easy, is it? You know, to do those little runs here and there, you need to, to know the keys that you're playing. Yeah. So that, that is another factor of the whole book, really, is to try and get people to understand keys um, and all of that that goes with it. Um, right, so the other pieces in there, we're going on from there. I did an arrangement from Adagio Strings. You know, that beautiful melody. Um, and I've not done this one before. And I thought, well, do you know what? I think adults really like to play this. So I've done quite a, what I consider to be an all right arrangement of that one. Um, Moonlight Romance. Again, I was in my, my romantic period. <laughs> and <laughs> I couldn't get out of it. I kept trying to burst out into something else, but it kept coming back to that. <laughs> Um, and then I did an arrangement of Danny Boy, which is also another one of my favourite ones. Um, and then another one after that was Salut d'Amour. So all of these well-known tunes, yes. I try to simplify them as much as I can. Yes. Which is quite difficult when you're trying to, to make it accessible for the nation, really, at grade yeah. three. Yeah. It's really hard. It's actually almost easier to write grade eight pieces, I find. I, I would know, agree. If somebody, yeah. yeah. If someone says, oh, I want some pieces for grade two or grade one yeah. or grade naught, yes. that is much, much harder, <clears throat> you know, because you can't use so many things. You can only use what, what that's you've got right. in the toolbox, which is not. It's, it's, a, lot, it's a lot more limited. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, the Skylarks is a tune which um, I think you're going to be, Rachel could perhaps tell you something about that one about the um, yeah. Skylarks off. So Skylarks is a lovely piece. And um, just because we're um, putting on this webinar um, just over a week before the book comes out, we thought we'd give you something um, to entice you in the meantime. So um, after the webinar, I believe that Sharon or Sally will be emailing yes. you um, a nice little freebie, which will be this piece called Skylark um to hopefully kind of tide you over until when the book's out next week and uh, you can use your offer code so um yes look out in for your inboxes for that piece yeah, yeah the title of the skylock i'll just tell you I, people often ask me about my titles and how did you come to that title because i quite that's important to get the right title and um Skylarks came about because just up the road from me, I live on just beyond Tennyson Down, which is a beautiful stretch of National Trust um, hillside going up to Tennyson Monument. It's beautiful. And my friend has just bought a house right on that on that side. And um, she didn't know what to call it, her house. And um, it's a well-known Skylark nesting area. Mm -hmm. So she decided she was going to call it Skylarks. I said, oh, what a lovely title. And she's one of my pupils. So I said, do you know what? I'll write you a tune. <laughs> I, so I did. And um, and she loves it. Yeah. And I think I, I think it's all right, this tune. I haven't got it here at the moment. So I, I haven't got it in the very so anyway, you'll get that for free. Um it's in that sort of look, it's three three in a bar and it going along like that. It's mm -hmm. it's really nice, but you do need a good neat finger work to play it. So again, you get rusty reminders on how to tackle little difficult bits in there. It's like a little workout, little workouts just to, to like the chromatic scale. I was going to say I like that little and triplet, triplet chromatic yeah. scale. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Exactly. So you know you've got to learn all that just doing it. You just do it. You know, learn it for both. Um, so that was another one. Um, Au fond du temps sont, I don't know how to say it really, but anyway, that was pretty much it. Uh, that was another arrangement. Shenandoah, another folk song. Mm. And Serenade, which is a, like in a, it's a chardas. And it's, it's really quite fun. I wonder if I've got that I can play a bit of. Hang on a second. Um, hang on a minute. Okay. Hold on. Here we have got a when when you finished with everything uh we pam we've got a, a few questions that have come in so we need to leave a bit of time for questions at the end yeah okay i'll just play the first bit give you a, a, an idea Love to of hear the it yeah
then it goes into variations where you, you go on and it, it's all a little bit quicker, a bit slower. So it's very ad lib, this one, yeah? Mm. But that was fun. Mm. I'm loving the sophistication of the signed world. And, you know, again, going back to talking about, you know, how, how difficult it is actually to write music and to be within that kind of grade three to five, that kind of that restraining it to that. Um, but yeah, I'm really yeah. loving um, the, the signed worlds. I, I, you know, you can kind of just imagine adults, you know, playing that to them and them going, yes, I would love to, I would love to learn to play that. Yeah, because at this particular level, when you're writing for mainly adults, mm. um, you can't, You've got to be quite sophisticated with what you're actually writing because yeah. you can't just give them a little tune, you know. Yeah, because yeah. I, I think... I, I, sorry, go ahead, Sally. Well, you've got to be careful with your titles. You've got to make them uh, uh, attractive in the first place so they actually want to go to it. Um, you know, yes. So that's another feature of the, the book, really. And then the very last piece is The Bay at Sunset, which is the bay down... I live about five-minute walk down to the bay from here. So the, the sunsets of the bay down there are just amazing. So I've just finished the book off with the bay at sunset, so everything's calming down again towards me. So mm. that's the, the repertoire, yeah. and I think that's that's I'll I'll stop there at that point. You can ask me questions or whatever you'd like to. Lovely. To do. Thank you, Pam. I think um, Gay's recognised that Pam's gone a bit quiet. I think it's because she's just been. Um, playing the piano and now Zoom will take a few moments to just adjust her, <laughs> her sound, it. I suspect. <laughs> yeah, recalibrate itself. Um, but it, it does sound really, really lovely, Pam, the, the book. And I love the point that you made at the very beginning, that there's nothing too difficult in there. And, and that actually yes. it's the quantity, but the really lovely quality of all those pieces that actually that's what people actually need. And that's the way that they will improve by yeah. just having pieces that are, they can play. Mm -hmm. You know, quite often we, we always want to push our pupils with harder and harder pieces, but actually they improve far more if you just give them lots of pieces at a level yeah. that they can play. Really important. Yeah. It is important. It's one of the most important things of teaching mm -hmm. is to not go into the other category of giving yeah. them something too difficult. To yeah, because yeah. if they're if they're climbing, if they're pushing up that mountain every single step and they don't just get to yeah. that place where they're actually enjoying, enjoying the view, as it were, yeah. um, it's it's challenging. And I think as well, just to pick up from a point that you made right at the beginning about, I think I picked this up right, Pam, about your student, the one that you told us the story about, kind of almost um, being a bit apologetic coming, it's like after all these years. And I think it's, it's a really good thing for us as teachers to remember because I think there are, I know I certainly come across a lot of adults who kind of go, oh, it's like but learning the piano is, is a child's thing. Because, and I know Sally that your PhD research supported the fact that the vast majority of, of, of students, you know, were, were not adult students. That was a much smaller number. It was smaller, but it was very significant, the number of, adult students who are learning, I think out of all the students, it was something like 17%, you know, which is nearly one fifth of all the people who are learning the piano. Now this was back in 2010, but nevertheless, there are a lot of adults there who are wanting to learn. Yeah. And yeah. They, they, they often do come back wanting to learn, thinking they failed in the first, in the first place yeah. because they gave up or they, and, and Pam is quite right to talk about people who want to, who think I can't sing or they, because I work a lot with the Voices Foundation, we go into schools, we meet class teachers who tell us we can't sing and we know that working with them throughout a year, we can get everybody singing or they say I'm not musical and what they mean by I'm not musical is I can't read music and there is this very strange mm. discrepancy between yes. people thinking that being musical means you can read music. And of course we know in the trade that is nothing to do with it. So you know, I think this idea of keeping the pieces really at a level that people can build confidence, I think that's what you're probably aiming for here, Pam. Am I right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hit the nail on the head there, definitely. Yeah. That, that is yeah. the point, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think for us yeah. as piano teachers to, I don't know what, 
people's advertising strategies are, but to actually advertise directly to the adult market to kind of have that yes. make it yeah. easy for them to come because sometimes they do hold back because they think I'm too old or I failed once before, so there's no point in trying again. And while so many of them, like Pam, the lady in your story, just, you know, clearly it's transformed her life the way she is, is enjoying and loving making music. So it's for us as teachers to make sure that we do address that audience and we invite people, adults, to contact us yeah. for lessons. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So a, a quick question, a couple of questions for you. Maggie is asking, are you going to write a rusty pianist book for for grades five to six level. So here you go. Here's your next outlet, Pam. Maggie is creating, you know, so this is Rusty Pinnis book two. Maybe not quite so rusty. Maybe this I'm, is becoming. As far as I'm concerned, the answer would be yes. Um, <laughs> well-oiled pianist, maybe. <laughs> the well-oiled rusty pianist. <laughs> anyway, we could work on that title. I'm sure something will come up. But um, it's depending on my wonderful publishers whether they think it's going to be a goer or not, really. <laughs> Couldn't possibly um, comment. <laughs> <laughs> sounds great. Love it. Sounds good. Yeah, it sounds yeah. good to all of us, Pam. <laughs> Off you go. Um. <laughs> I'm hoping that we can do is lots of add ons for the Rusty Pianists, like, you know, all sorts of other aspects that, that yeah. can come from this book, which will deal with certain aspects of, of it. So it could be an ongoing situation. Or not, mm. <laughs> depending yeah. on how it, if you all go rush out and buy a book, then they might let me do another one. <laughs> <laughs> now, Lynn has got a question, and she this is to do with upgrade two and three. She'd like to know who old Ned was, and she says her pupils love that piece, and she wondered whether he was a horse you had or knew or just completely imaginary. So, the story, please. Pam. <laughs> There is a story. I have a younger sister who works with horses. And when she was a very little girl, she always wanted a horse. So my parents bought her a horse. We weren't very rich, but somehow or another, we got this horse. And only because she kept looking at this other old horse in the field next door, who was called Ned. <laughs> so she was completely besotted with old Ned. So it had to, this piece had to be called Old Ned because it's got a bit of a background. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's it really. Uh, there you go, horse. Lynn. You can, where we live. yeah. You can tell your pupils you had it from the horse's mouth or the composer's mouth. <laughs> they always get very impressed when you say, well, I was talking to the composer just the other day. I do. <laughs> <laughs> you try that with your pupils because they'll love it. <laughs> Have we got any other questions, Sharon? <clears throat> Um, let's see, I think people just sound excited, um, Louise is saying, you know, sounds like a super book, so much beautiful and varied material, um, mixture of original compositions and arrangements, and yes, I think this is really, Pam, what makes it so rich, it's, you know, you've obviously done your research in terms of the, the well-known pieces, you know, folk, um, folk music and, and more classical, what do they actually want? You've done a beautiful job of that. And then you've put in your own original compositions as well. So there is a wonderful um, wealth mm. of uh, just in, in, in that one volume. And I, to be honest, when I had a, a look through it, I thought, oh, I'm just going to be using this, <laughs> you know, so it's not just going to be there are you know, there's music that I can think of, you know, or students I can think of who will be using this um, just as, as, as part of their repertoire um, journey because um, of, of what you've well, done. I think it can be used in very many contexts. You get the more mature person who's going to want to play it, but you can also get like the teenagers or people who are in that, that difficult level yes. who, who <laughs> might be benefit from something like mm. this. Um, mm. You know, and it, it, it can be adapted to any, any situation, really. So, yeah, and I yeah. think the rusty reminder certainly as well, because we've included that as a um, as a pull out reminder sheet. So mm. what you can do is, you know, take those rusty reminders with you. You may be playing from the rusty pianist, but like across everything that you're learning to have that on the stand, music stand next to you, just to kind of keep it ticking over will be really helpful. Oh, I like the sound of that, that mm. you can, because it, it, you know, there are general principles there 
and and there you are you're taking that general principle of the rusty reminders whatever it is peddling etc over yeah. to the new the new thing and i've just yeah. seen a question about whether the book can be purchased digitally yeah. too so not at the moment um i I'm, I'm sure that we will probably look at some point to make it into an ebook um but usually we'll we'll publish um the physical copy first but keep your eyes peeled um and i'm sure it'll come along at some point yeah yeah, yeah that's great yeah, Mag, Mag has just come back with another question about her rusty grade six to seven pianist. And she, she's saying that she actually meant for a pupil who is rusty, but at grade six to seven level. I, does that make sense to people? But I still think if you're rusty, then you're probably coming back at the lower level and then working mm. up through. That would be, I think, I'm my just point. I'm going to say that because you've got to go a little bit lower than you really yeah. think you are yes. in order to improve because otherwise you'll just go backwards and mm. get frustrated mm. and yes. it won't happen. So that, that, that's another good point. Yeah. Mm. I mean, yeah. You know, you've got to do things sensibly. Yeah, and um, things like the reminders of, um, you know, the kind of the terminology and everything like that, I think at, like at whatever point you kind of stopped and where you're picking it up, mm. you're probably still going to be like, oh, trying to you know, need to remember all those things. Yeah. yeah, I'm seeing here yeah, Victoria no, is saying my rusty grade four students started back with me at grade one level. Yeah. Can I just pick the la um, last minute just to kind of give people some information about the discount code? We Please will obviously we'll, we'll remind you um, <laughs> um, a little bit later on when the book's out next week. But um, two seconds, let me just. Yes, and just to mm. confirm, I will be sending everyone an email um, probably within the next 24 hours. So you'll get the replay to this webinar and you'll also get um, this information. Rachel, over to you. Yeah, so um, just to let you know, so the book is out on the 21st of April. Um, and um, so it is, um, sorry, one second. So it's 9.99. Um, uh, but we'll have a code RUSTY, um, which you can enter at the checkout to get 20% discount on that from favormusic.com forward slash shop. Um, that will be available in the UK um, from the 21st of April to, 31st, uh, to the 30th of April. Um, and I actually know the, um, the, offer, the offer code should be available um, uh, worldwide, kind of like in Australia as well. I've seen people in Australia. Mm -hmm. um uh just at the moment not in the eu um so that's that and yeah we'll send over the discount code and also the skylark piece for you that's it it's actually really it's lovely book, really, isn't it? it's quite it's quite a large book it's 40 odd pages so mm. you are getting quite a lot for your money actually it sounds yes. quite a lot 999 but in fact it, it's not really there is a lot in there piece. yes mm. yes um, just want to read out Julianne's comment. She says, Pam, you are so delightfully real. I love your stories and music. Thank you for sharing of yourself today. <laughs> and I think that is a lovely way um, just to wrap up. Well, let's see, we have maybe another one. Well, I was, I was just going to say, if you want to meet Pam again, then in one of our curiosity boxes, as we said from about four years ago, Pam actually talks about her whole composition process and actually goes, I don't know if, whether you remember doing that, Pam, but you go into some depth about how you compose and it, it's all aimed at helping your younger students, your, your teenagers, to start the whole composition process. So do go and explore that because it is a, one of our little gems. Sharon. Yes, and I'm just going to put in that link again to, um, to the brochure. Uh, where you can you can download that and go and claim your free month and then go over to that particular curiosity box which is March <laughs> we always struggle, struggle with this Sally Something March 2016 or 17 anyway we can always our wonderful community manager Hannah can help you with that if you get in there and you can't find it but yes it was a wonderful, wonderful curiosity box. Um, and we do obviously do all of these wonderful community chats as well. And Pam, we must get you on one of those informal we chats. We must actually. We're yes. talking about getting people 
well-known people just to come it's literally it's as informal as it gets i mean it's not about coffee talking and chat. about anything it's coffee and chat um and it would be wonderful to get you on one of those as well so um thank you thank you thank you so much to everyone who has joined our call um a massive thank you uh to pam and to rachel and uh i, I don't know about you but i've just had a wonderful hour i was kind of i was had Monday morning for me is usually quite busy and quite, uh, and it's just, I'm kind of all jizzed up again. I'm good to go for our meeting, Sally, that's next. Yeah. <laughs> me too, me too. So Pam, thank you as ever. It's delightful to spend time in your company and you know, your music just really does make the heart sing, I think for so yes. many of us here. And uh, I can remember your first books coming out and using them so many times in my lessons back in the eighties, many years ago now, but you know, it's it's fantastic that you've still got that creative urge and please do keep sharing everything that you do with us because we really do appreciate all the work that you do. Yeah, it's wonderful. Well, Lots thank of you so much for doing this for me because it's wonderful for me to, to, to be in this room with all of you and all the people from around the world and um, just keep the music going. You're doing yeah. a fantastic job, you curious people. <laughs> <laughs> so wonderful. And thank Absolutely. you, Rachel, for being there. And thank you, everybody, for just coming, really. And if I can be of help in the future, just give me a shout. Lovely. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for all of your gorgeous comments that have just been coming through this last minute or two. Um, clearly, Pam, everyone has had an absolute ball. They have loved it and have loved you. Thank you so much. And the webinar will, the replay will be available very soon. Have a great rest of the day. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.